and to have a government uh, in place that is willing and able to use the technological tools available to engage us citizens. That's currently not happening or not happening at a sufficiently high level. We are still in this old-fashioned mode of thinking about transactions, efficiency, and user friendly. Um, the, the U.S. government uh, lags behind in electronic government quite a bit, uh, largely because whenever you need to create an electronic government transaction uh, software, and you need to involve a number of different government stakeholders. And they despise each other usually. And, and they hate when the other side has access to their information and data. Data silos and information silos in government are one way of, of defining power and influence. And, and so uh, obliterating those silos really reduces the power of individual departments and agencies. And that's why they're not keen on doing that. And let me give you a, uh, what I thought a wonderful example, if I may. Um, there was a website um, uh, on uh, moving, called Moving, um, and it helped people who were moving house um, to do the change of address form, to move the electricity and the gas and the utilities over to telephone, uh, to also hire perhaps a moving van and so forth. It was a one-stop shop for all of this. Uh, and it was a public-private partnership uh, that made this all possible. And it was a huge success. People really loved this, uh, this website. Uh, government agencies realized that. And they thought, gosh, this means there's real traffic to be generated. And immediately what they did was to uh, leave that umbrella, that one-stop shop, and to create their own little shops in order to drive traffic to their own little shops. Of course, uh, the sum was really more uh, the, the 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 sum was more than uh, just uh, parts put together. And once you take these parts apart, uh, and everybody has this little shop, the consumers really are frustrated again uh, and don't want to go to 15 or 16 different websites uh, in order to change their addresses. Um, the problem, therefore, is that when you Break down the silos, you create value. When you resurrect uh, the silos, you destroy value. Uh, that's something that uh, government agencies um, theoretically understand, but have practical difficulties realizing and putting them together. But I am really more interested in another aspect. I am interested in the way by which government in the United States has now decided to make public a lot of the information there is left. Uh, my colleague and friend Beth Novak uh, and others uh, have really pushed this very hard uh, in the uh, Obama administration. And I think that's exactly right. Uh, what we need is more information uh, that the government collects, not personal information, but general information, to be shared with the public at large, with NGOs, uh, with uh, the society at large, so that they can then look at that data and really see what is happening in our society. We now have the software tools to do that. Uh, we now have the interest in the public to do that. And that's why we need to move ahead and make more and more of that government in the There's a huge difference between um, if you look at the website that the Obama administration set up uh, to be able to trace the money of the stimulus package going into the economy, and you can see to which um, communities, which counties, uh, to uh, what companies uh, and institutions or organizations the money goes, uh, how much has been dispensed, uh, what was the impact on employment, and so forth. Uh, this data is fabulously uh, well designed uh, and presented uh, through a geographic interface, um, and it's, um, it is simply superb. Uh, very, very different from the previous uh, administration. In fact, uh, the outgoing Clinton-Gore administration um, put in place, for example, a website with the Environmental Protection Agency where the Environmental Protection Agency made accessible uh, a, a self-reporting 
uh, inventory of toxic waste um, and linked it to a geographic information system so that people could actually look at their neighborhood and see whether there were any toxic waste repositories in their neighborhood. Uh, when that went online, a lot of people started pressuring uh, the, the companies in their neighborhood that had toxic waste to clean up and to get their act together because land value would adjust. Uh, and so there was uh, almost a, a wonderful market force as well as a democratic force behind it. Uh, of course, the uh, George W. Bush administration after 9-11 uh, took the website down, uh, ostensibly because of the security risk. Uh, the terrorists could access the toxic waste inventory and find out where the toxic waste was in this country. Uh, I am not so sure the security risk really was that high. I think uh, a, a lot of people in the, I suspect a lot of people in the Bush administration uh, connected to some of the toxic wasters uh, were quite happy to uh, put that database offline. Well, first of all, if we uh, permit people to have access to government information, uh, we don't necessarily become more vulnerable. The uh, cybersecurity task is mostly one focused on uh, keeping the infrastructure up and running. Uh, and we're very vulnerable there. We're very vulnerable not just on the internet information infrastructure, but on the energy and electricity infrastructure as well. Uh, we are vulnerable because for many years, even decades, we have um, increased the efficiency of the infrastructure, but limited the investment in redundancy and robustness of the infrastructure. And that makes uh, all these infrastructures prime targets uh, for hackers and terrorists around the world. Whether they're organized by a nation state or whether they are uh, non-combatant terrorists, uh, Al-Qaeda, Zilk, or, or anything else, I think we need to spend more money on that. I, I think we need to spend more money on um, securing the infrastructure, uh, on knowing what the other side is doing, uh, the, Federal government does not have yet its act together on cybersecurity. Uh, that's still a um, big problem. Um, it will require all the major stakeholders to come together. It re will require some legislative change as well. Uh, and uh, it will require a different mindset of the people. Um, the missiles of tomorrow are not going to come to the sky, they're coming through a fiber optic network. It's a very interesting talk. Uh, it's called Big Faith. And in this talk, I share with you the ideas <coughs> on some of the basics in e-government from a very interesting perspective of the practitioners of e-government. So that is week number nine. <coughs> if you look at the themes of week number nine, it's social networking, e-business model, e-government, and e-learning. All right, having said that, let's get back to our class today. Now, we are in the second week of learning contract number three. We have one more week to go, and then you have to submit the learning artifacts for learning contract number three. And according to the advice given last week, we are wanting a new class requirement today. So what I'm going to do is invite you to spend no more than five minutes time to get yourself ready for the two minutes sharing done by one member of your group. In a minute, I'm going to pass the microphone to one after the other, the four groups representative. And after that, you have about 15 minutes time to work together, to organize yourself in class, and then we're wanting into the second round of sharings. In the second round of sharing, all the members need to come here and to share no more than two minutes per member the work done so far. And it's highly recommended that you make the best use of Wiki and the team discussion forum already given you for week number eight, number nine, number ten to do the sharing. So organize yourself now, help yourself. Two minutes introductions by one member of the team, and then we'll be followed by about 15 minutes work on your own. Organize yourself in the second round of sharing. All the members of your team need to come here. Okay, let's do it. Yes. What are you going to share with us today about the problem that is being worked on by your team in the contract number three? All right. And I know Joanna will not be here today because she's having a conference in Shanghai. Okay. And during this time, we're going to take attendance. Joanna 
Ihnen die Sitzungsnormen sehen, Herr Garo gesehen, Herr Gero gesehen, Herr Eifi gesehen, Herr Rinke gesehen, Finze gesehen, Fink gesehen, Fink, I again thank you. And then Apple, Herr Kroger gesehen, Coco gesehen, Kelvin, Kelvin is not here yet, Brandon, thank you. Bobby, yes, Bobby is here. And then Eddie, yes, thank you. Max is here. Rufus is here. And then Neil, thank you. Yes, almost all of you are here. <coughs> you have two minutes today uh, to share, but let me bring you the music to help you soften up a little bit. Okay? The music. In the end of the music, you need to share. We call it music chair practice.
started. <clears throat> so, team number one. Yes, Max. Very clear. Oh, thank you. Thank you very, very much, Max from Team One. So, may I invite representative from Team Two? Yeah. Yes. Just pick up. No more than two minutes, okay? It's from Faith, right? Yes. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, our topic is what is social network. Uh, we have we have three questions to expand this topic. One is Lufus. Lufus Lufus topic is to to find the uh, what is the the one the, uh, no, uh, who use the social network the most. Brandon is the is the master of the topic is what is the this uh, the advantage of social network and Leo is uh, is to find the network the the this advantage of network and why why use this topic is uh, if we cannot pretty clearly recognize the advantage and disadvantage of social network, we may be heard from it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Faith. This is from team number two. So may I invite representative from team number three to come up here? Team number three. Thanks. Now remember, you just have two minutes. Brief, uh, very brief sharing. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is John, and and today I'm going to introduce our goals and what our goals have done. And we have done our proposal for, and we have done our proposal last week, and this is our good members topic. And we are going to do our e what is e-learning. Why do we choose this topic? Because we think that is um, very popular. Is e-learning because nowadays e we use electronic system very widely. So we choose this topic for our group. And this is our question. Why we need e-learning and what is e-learning background and how the people develop it? And number question number three is what is different in e-learning and real learning? And that's the end of our. Thank you. Thank you very good. Uh, it's very concise and uh, it's very up to the point. So lastly is team number four. <coughs> we need a representative. It's Nan Nan. Erica. Uh, 
Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, our group have four members, but last week uh, most of them had uh, exam. So we just decide what topic we have to do. Uh, first, uh, it's the what is wiki, and we decide have uh, three questions to to talk about. Uh, first is how to use Wikipedia and what is the advantages and what is disadvantages. And based on these three uh, questions, uh, we now now we uh, know about the wiki is uh, refers to a uh, hypertext system. It's a collaborative writing tool. And uh, it's very useful in group, <laughs> in teamwork. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Erica. <coughs> now it's on to the time for you, individual teams, to organize and further uh, prepare yourself for the second round of sharings today. In the second round of sharing, each team will be given 10 minutes time, and each member of the team must speak up for your work uh, in the team. And so let's get started for your preparations. Again, I'm going to play you some music to start with. And when the music stops, it's time for you to share. Okay, this time.
sit next to you, the person who's going to speak is going to stand here with the microphone and the fellow member can sit and then when it's your turn for the fellow member you can switch chair with the fellow member and the fellow member stand here, okay? So it's much more professional. Okay, so may I pass the microphone to Coco and you are going to handle the rest, all right? So we have Yes, you need to go out. Yeah, go out. All the members of team number one. We have two ladies and two gentlemen here. Uh, yes, ten minutes at most. Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. And, and our team have have start, started our discussion about our topic and we have finished our journal yes and we have posted on our wiki so that um, everyone each of our members can read and now talk about my topic my topic is e-business uh, the reason that I choose this topic is because uh, this is e-business is related to our our team's topic information privacy because e-business is very successful nowadays and but it has many weeks so uh, we have to raise the awareness of our privacy. Uh, and my topic is what is the web technology and its impact in life. And I will choose this topic is because in web technology is necessary in our life and it makes our life more convenient and effective and it related to information privacy, so I choose this topic. Good morning everyone. My name is Max. And our discussion topic is what is information privacy and my question is um, is what is so society what is society responsibility in the information age I think there is a big relationship between uh, social responsibility and information privacy and I have two questions uh, first is why we need to free the society so responsibility in the information age 
And the second question is, what are the effects if people do not fulfill the society responsibility in the information age? And at last, I think if people don't fulfill the society responsibility, our privacy is easy to be default in the information age. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everyone, my name is Bobby, and my individual learning journal is uh, what is total sharing. I think it is related to uh, our topic. What is information privacy? Because um, I think uh, photo sharing is a sort of information privacy. Um, it is uh, photo sharing is popular nowadays. So I choose this topic. So I choose this question. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. So, any summing up? No. Thank you. Thank you, team number one. So may I invite uh, members from team number two? Yes. Bobby, could you pass the microphone to them? network and the society is more and more weakness so and social network plays an important role in our daily life if we can if we can recognize the the one digits and is the one digit of social network we can use it for useful way thank you thank you faith my name is Brandon. Uh, our topic is what is social networking. <laughs> well, uh, I have already found uh, the question and uh, the advantage of social networking. <laughs> Why I choose these questions? Because nowadays many people use social networking and uh, do many uh, communicates. Uh, uh, also, recent recent years, many uh, is developed very fast. And in the following days, I will organize the meeting times and determine the topic directions and find the information readers is uh, reliable. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. My question is, who use social networking? Uh, why me do this topic? Uh, because I want to know who use the social networking the most and why or how they use social networking. And I will search the resource and put uh, something on the wiki. Thank you. Thank you, Rufus. Hello, I'm Neil. Uh, my topic is a uh, disadvantage about the level. Uh, I, found, I, found the, I found the first part in the internet. Uh, this is still face to face communication. Uh, because some people use the level to Communication of some people, and uh, they uh, it will reduce the face to face uh, communication. And this work, I will do the second part about the bullying of level. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have anything more to add so far? No? Thank you. Yes. So, may I invite team number three?
Yes, please stand towards the center. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Norman. Uh, our group chose topic is what is e learning because this topic concludes uh, uh, John's topic is uh, measure of the Andy's topic is hacking and Neville's topic is photo sharing. And because uh, e learning is a big topic, so uh, I want to combine this. Uh, members topic in it. So uh, let John share his topic's uh, function. Okay. Hello, I'm John. And my topic is what is match up. And the reason I chose this topic because uh, Nowadays, MeshUp is very popular. MeshUp is just like uh, combining software and just like Facebook and Instagram. You can post your photo and give some comment to the photo. And the question that I have on MeshUp is question number one, why MeshUp is popular in the world recently? And question two is, where will people use MeshUp the most? Then question number three is, what is your most favorite MeshUp? And this is the three most interesting question, I think. And now I ask the money to edit. Hi everyone. My question is, what is tagging? Just how John says, people's favorites. And we post some photos, and we just tag friends or have some praise. And so my free question is, why you use tag, and when you use tag? Just and the final question is, how you use tag? And if just shift plus two keyword is add, just you you can tag some. Friend's name in the soul, your friend can know it, notice the post. <coughs> so that's my part of our presentation. Just my part to Apple. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Apple. Um, my topic is uh, photo sharing. Yeah. And uh, what is photo sharing? Um, in my opinion, and then I choose the reason I choose the topic is because. Uh, it's because uh, photo sharing is popular and everyone uh, will share the photo and when they eat or uh, shopping travel and they uh, so uh, it is a popular uh, action for the people and so I enjoy I interest in it and then I choose this topic. And in the future, uh, our group will have a, have a discussion and, and to conclude our topic uh, in the e-learning. Uh, so, and that's all of our... Thank you. Thank you, Apple, uh, Eddie, uh, John, and... Uh, I forgot. Norman, yes, thank you. <coughs> so the last team, and uh, let's have uh, Vincent, Vic, and Erica. Hello, my name is Frank, and I'm going to talk about how to use 
wiki and advantage. Uh, wiki is a uh, use, very useful thing uh, uh, in the internet. Uh, <coughs> uh, I will go into talk about his advantage. Uh, maybe later I will. I'm going to talk about many things. Wiki. Hello. Um, my topic is what is Wiki and what is that uh, disadvantage. Uh, now I have some ideas. First is uh, uh, when we use Wiki, we just uh, only one people can use when we post it. But uh, what about uh, two people can uh, post our idea in the Wiki at the same time, not just wait and wait and Second is, uh, is that Wiki really uh, safe? Uh, because uh, nowadays uh, there have many international internet uh, criminal. Uh, if some hacker <laughs> hack our idea and to use that things in other uh, criminal ways, uh, is that uh, is Wiki really safety? Uh, this is the most question I want to talk about. Uh, and there have uh, one person not here in our group. Um, so that's our three ideas. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for your sharing. And uh, we do have uh, a very good opportunity to listen to each team uh, from this class to share with us in class of the work, okay, in progress. Allow me to help um, in the way that uh, eventually, your team has to come back to one topic, okay? <coughs> that is the problem, what we call problem-based learning in your team. It's also possible that within this one topic that your team is working on, individual member of your team could have different topic on your journal. Now the question is, do you want to select a topic for your journal that is conducive to your team topic, or do you just select a topic for your journal which is different or separate from your team topic? And that is an individual's decision, alright? So overall, I think you know the, the, the differences. So for me, my job next is to boost you a little bit. Now, you should make the best use of this team online discussion forum to exchange your views, okay? We have a lot of discussions going on here. And for each team, you should keep some records of the key discussions. And the second thing you need to know is to make the best use of the wiki, all right? The wiki is starting from week number eight, number nine, and number 10. The wiki link is here. You need to construct the team wiki by listing all what you have done so far. So that in the front page, we know how to enter your team space, your peer space, or even individual space. And most importantly, the artifact space, where you have actually finished preparing each of the six artifacts needed, and actually nine over there, right? So let me take a look at to see if you have already got something there. Let's say we go to team number one, all right? So this is what I can see, right? That's very good. And this is team number one. If we take a look at the view, we can see that this is the journal's link, all right? This is one example. So another team, team number two. So we can see what is social networking. Now, you have to make sure, this is your fun page, okay? The fun page, you have to organize it in such a way we have some links into what each member has been doing, okay? It's not just the topic itself, it's very important. And then tip number three, all right? You need to work harder, okay? <laughs> to make sure you establish your, your wiki page. Tip number four, all right, you need to stop doing it. Thank you very much. Now, allow me to bring you back for those of you who are doing uh, e-learning. I want to make sure that you know that we have excellent resources here in week number nine for e-learning. 
Okay, so let's try to take a look at the e-learning stuff I prepared for you. Of course, marks of reverse interview, you can, you can watch it at home. And this is week number nine. What is e-learning? Well, I think it's a good idea to think of e-learning as not just from remote learning, it's uh, on-site on, on learning as well. Learning through using the internet, um, communicating with people online, email contact, um, discussion boards, um, extra readings online. You can download um, the lecture notes before you go to class, on like Blackboard and things like that. So I don't have to spend the whole time like scribbling down everything the teacher says. The accessibility is the best part of the learning. The learning response yeah. is probably the most best part. And the business. And if I miss a class, then it's important for me that I'm not disappointed by trying to get information. Let's take some examples. You, you hear some people say on the personal response to e learning, the very late on living, sorry. We had to do recent classes, and the good thing about it was we could do it as much as we wanted in that week, um, and they just take a mean for our score. So, maybe if you did really bad the first time, you could just keep going over it until you got better. When something does get updated, or if there is something online people like us to look at, then a text goes out to our phones from from the, the website saying this has been updated. There's a new video tutorial online for you to look at if you'd like some help with this. In the um, Google site there, there is a place where students can log on and be updated with any information. But it was really, really helpful. Because when I was stuck in a question, I just typed it on. And everyone in our class just pitched in what they thought about that question. They could do live chat if there were people on at the same time. Discussion boards through e-learning have been fantastic. Um, students can write um, questions that they may have about an assignment, for example and the um, lecturer or tutor can answer back and then other students who may also have had that same question can also view the um, question and the answer. You've heard about those typical examples, soft up to the point. This is something you're looking for to support your work, okay, in the problem learning, based learning episodes. Typical questions. I found it really helpful in a specific task like when it came to study, um, having the ability to be just jump online and have my notes right there and download it all. I've got teenage children, so my, my time is taken up a lot with them, which means that like at six in the morning and I'm right awake, or five thirty in the morning when I'm up, and or at eleven o'clock when I've got my own space. I'm in my bed, my comfort zone, my electric blanket on, my surrounding, very very familiar to me. When you're in a classroom and you're given <coughs> facts figures and if you don't absorb them immediately, you can go back over them. The question will be incredibly bored. What am I supposed to do with this? You know, and how am I supposed to understand it and process it and then find information? But by having uh, online forums where it's got a question, it's got a context around the question, and it's got your classmates <coughs> asking questions about it, the same kind of questions that you're kind of thinking. Just get you a good uh, place to start. I suppose. I'm pretty shy, like in front of a class. But if I'm just like on the computer tapping in, I could ask any question of no embarrassment. If somebody is timid in class, um, about asking questions, or they thought they understood it, but they didn't, and when they get home, they're sorry doing their assignment, they don't understand it. It is a lot easier to send uh, an email or um, through a forum to your friends or to your lecturers saying, so, I didn't quite get this. Can you explain it to me again? It helps you get your head around something you can't see. By computer generated programs, you can see the inside the engine. Where if you just pop the bottom on the car, you can't see the inside the engine itself and see how everything works. We'd be like on Carpetsy Island, and there'd be things there where we'd be doing um, transit lines or um, field work or bird monitoring or the, um, bush bush environments. So sometimes when you're working in those environments and, it, and the person who's getting triggered is talking to you, you can't quite hear them. So later on, when you get the DVD resource back, you're able to go back and go, oh, that's exactly what you see. Now, um, 
typically when you listen to some episodes of e-learning like this, particularly for the group who have chosen e-learning as your topic, you can actually position through three sets of questions, very much like this, and invite some of your fellow students, maybe not from this class, and ask for their feedback. And then keep a simple video of them and just keep it in your report and in your wiki too. And for the same question, you got different kind of feedback, and this is what I, what we believe are important. Very interesting. They're talking about forums, they're talking about wiki, they're talking about journals, they're talking about submission minutes. Very much like what you're doing, right? And so, <coughs> may I just invite you to continue to work among yourself and to just to get started and to plan for what you're going to talk about next class <coughs> on Thursday. Now the challenge of this kind of in-class sharing, in particular in learning contract number three is you must connect what you say today to what you're going to say next in the next class. And when you make all the connections throughout these two weeks, and eventually you can contribute to the artifacts that you're going to submit on November the 2nd. All right? And you also have to update your wiki, you have to make sure you finish writing your journals, your discussion forums there, and then uh, your report. Remember, your report is based on one topic, but you, each of you has already chosen an individual topic. You have to make sure you contribute to the writing of the report based on that team topic. Okay, that's it for today, and I would like to see you back here on Thursday with another round of sharing, so get yourself ready, all right?